Hello everybody, my name is Bright Rose and welcome back to Minecraft. We are in a new world here today because I'm trying something a little different. What we are going to be doing is we're going to be doing a series of, well, survival challenges. But basically, I'm going to be dropping into random biomes and seeing how long I can survive in a hardcore world trapped within the spawn biomes. So, that's the overlook. This is the uh, first one that I spawned into. So let's have a look back in time and see exactly how well I did. And of course, if you're going to enjoy this content, please drop a like, drop a comment saying that you'd like to see more. And why not subscribe as well? It would really help me out. So thank you. And uh, let's watch me suffer. Okay, it's going to be planes. It's going to be planes. It's always going to be planes. Going to be fine. Oh no, it's windswept savannah. Oh no, no, no. Oh no, no. Oh, what fresh hell have I dropped into? This is terrible. This, this is just awful. With this new terrible biome I'd found myself in, it kind of became a necessity that I was going to have to at least explore, find out what resources I had available beyond rocks, caught dust, and the occasional tree. And it wasn't much. These really are the most barren places you can come across in Minecraft. But... There was going to have to be something that I had to do, because if I didn't get food anytime soon, starvation or death by random falling was very quickly going to be my most present threat. Having explored a little bit, it was time to get down to the basics of Minecraft. Punch a tree, get those basic tools, and begin to, you know, establish a little bit more hardware. There was enough resources in this area, the coal and things like that, a little bit of iron, that tools were not going to be a problem, but... Still, it was going to be very basic for quite a while. I realised one of my main concerns quite early on was going to be the fact that it's going to get dark soon, and I had no means of making a bed, so lighting this place up was going to be of vital importance, because with all these high areas, drop creepers were most definitely going to be a threat, so I spent a decent amount of time just running around, picking a kind of area that I thought was going to at least act as my central base, and making sure it was at least somewhat spawn-proof. After that, it was on to the only real way that I was going to get any food right now, which was going to be fishing. Now, how much I found out fishing was going to be a pain in my existence in this world was uh, very rapidly becoming evident, as I was doing my very best to stick to the spawn biome, so... I was had my eyes glued to the top left of my screen where it showed what biome I was currently in. And if I accidentally crossed over to, into the ocean, I would very rapidly turn around and come back into the windswept savanna. This meant that any fish that decided to swim outside of the biome, hmm, well, they were safe and I was going to go hungry. So 
but at least my first little fishing trip had been somewhat successful. And as night began to fall, I decided, you know, I should probably, you know, spend some time getting a little bit of resources. Because it was going to get dangerous very, very quickly. But if I wanted a bed, the only feasible way I was going to do that right now was going to be harvesting as much string as possible. So it was time to gear up and see if I could get lucky and go and hunt some spiders. Even at this point, any mob was potentially useful because there's always a chance that a zombie is going to drop a potato or something like that and that's a potential source of food, something that I really needed right now. Safe to say, my monster hunt didn't entirely go to plan, although the occasional spot of damage didn't really cause any problems, and I managed to survive at least, but yeah, this probably wasn't going to be the best way to go about this right now. So it was back to fishing. Always back to fishing. Those taunty little cods staying just out of my reach. The fish not exactly biting, I decided to explore my general area once again and got off in the direction I hadn't gone previously. And sticking to the water kind of became important because of the amount of creepers that were on land. Whilst there was a few other little biomes dotted around, there was a plains on one side and a swamp on this side. Uh, it was a little bit fraught. I did briefly think about the idea of trying to lure the slime over so maybe I could get a lead and see if I could hook a few creatures that might be just on the outskirts, but that was going to prove very difficult, especially with the waves of zombies that were coming after me. the water apparently not being safe, I decided to try the land once again. And, well, that didn't work out. And then, you know, the water came back with a bit of a vengeance. So, taking the noble retreat became a very good idea at this point. At this point, it was probably time I started putting down some uh, firmer roots and... Uh, at least there was quite a lot of grass dotted around the biome, so I was going to at least be able to plant some seeds and maybe sometime in the future get a little bit of wheat. So at least bread and the potential for chickens was going to be a thing. But there were interruptions during this process. Thankfully, not deadly ones, but collecting grass was going to be quite a large part of my future. One of the things I really have to be careful of when I'm doing this sort of thing, especially as we are in a hardcore world, is I'm very used to just throwing myself off cliffs. Back to fishing once again, and the dolphins just began to taunt me ceasingly with the just rapid swimming between all the various areas. And the little bottlenose bastards started just taunting me, so I kind of gave up, vowed revenge, and just went back to the land.
Lighting up was definitely becoming a thing, so finding all the areas, at least in my immediate vicinity, that were going to cause me issues in the future was kind of important. And I wanted to just scope out the edges of the general biome, get an idea of exactly how far I could travel around, and work out just where the transitions between the biomes were. The planes off to one end of the biome offered probably much more of a opportunity, considering how many animals were out in the planes, but also there were things just out of my reach I didn't know why I wanted them, or what I would really need them for, but the very fact that they were there and I couldn't get them posed quite an annoyance, and I just wanted to reach over and get them, but I couldn't. More exploring of the island led me to the hope that maybe there was some sort of secret hidden passageways and tunnels beneath the island that would lead me to things like lush caves where I might get another source of fish that I didn't have to fly around in the water for, but no, sadly, there was just annoying holes dotted around the place. When it wasn't the dolphins taunting me, the frogs that had managed to make their way over from the swamp did a good job. I spent a long time considering whether or not to kill them and if they potentially dropped something that would be useful, but uh, no. I let them be and they bounced around happily, but their freedom began to annoy me. I spent what was probably far, far too much time staring at the spider in the edges of the swamp hoping and attempting to lure it a little closer. The prospect of that string was becoming quite necessary. The hope of being able to maybe build a bow to allow hunting a little bit easier, or getting enough string together with potentially a few more spiders to be get some wool and then have a bed so I could sleep the night away was really, really tempting. And I don't want to admit how much time I spent on the edge of the biome just staring at that spider before I gave up. It was quite annoying that I really couldn't leave random mobs alone because of the threat that they posed my health, but also the chances that they would drop something useful with even the slightest chance. But as with pretty much everything, when I was beginning to really run out of food, everything came back to fishing. And when the fishing didn't quite work out, it went back to normal chores. Collecting wood, things like that. It got to the point where I decided that I was going to be a little bit more proactive. So using one of my precious iron bars, I made myself a stone cutter, mined a whole bunch of cobble, and decided I'd try and work on a bit of a crude mob farm. Because if I couldn't get the spiders to come to me, maybe I could you know, generate some spiders for myself. I'm going to admit it, this was a very long shot. This was an exceptionally crude mob farm, and uh, for the amount of time I had it up before I ripped it down, honestly, I don't think it was ever really going to work, so I probably wasted a good 10 minutes building this, but it was probably more out of desperation than anything else. And yes, as ever, desperation leads to fishing. At least this fishing trip did result in an actual catch, at least enough to keep me away from the half point of saturation that I was currently sat on. And uh, the zombies were just keeping an eye waiting for me to fall. But at least this day ended with getting to watch the sunrise and eating some fish. And day three brought the very first wheat harvest and the prospect of more seeds and bread, which would allow me to, you know, at least survive on more than 
fish. And having wheat meant that I could begin to start tempting some other animals closer. So going back to the plains biome, I found some sheep, worked out where I would need to stand to try and taunt them in, and began the process of staring at sheep in the distance. Knowing a little bit about mob mechanics, I worked my way up the edges of the bio, making sure to walk along the fine line. Finding the highest point in the general area normally means that mobs will gravitate towards the highest point. So if I stayed around this area and kept the chunks loaded in long enough, there was a chance that one of the sheep, or maybe more, would have wandered slowly up the hill towards me and the wheat that I just harvested would allow me to bring them back to my little camp and obtain, well, first of all, wool for a bed and then more of a source of food. However, the sheep stubbornly remained in the low plains and only the chicken decided to wander closer, so burn away some hunger to try and get some seeds and lure the chicken back towards base. Leading mobs in early game is one of those annoying but inevitable features of a Minecraft world, and this little chicken leading session contained a certain amount of more desperation than usual, but I was ultimately successful. We got the chicken back to base, and the prospect of eggs in the future leading to more chickens was quite the prospect. Boyed up on my successful chicken hunt, I decided that I should probably take some action and uh, at least make my life a little bit easier. So, burning a few sticks, decided to make a ladder to make it easier to get in and out of the chicken hole. And let's hope the eggs begin to pay off straight away. As we got into the deep night of day three, I decided that maybe some more mob hunting was a good way to go. And a skelly did present the opportunity for bones and a few other things. And if I was careful enough, I might be able to get out of this by taking as little damage as possible. So, carrying behind my shield and some portable terrain, I set in for... Well, it ended up being quite a hair-raising fight, and oh, it wasn't going well at all. I decided to try and block myself in to at least try and eat, which led to a quite terrifying situation. With my heart firmly beating in my chest, I decided that, you know, maybe mob hunting wasn't the right thing to do, and I'll go back to some nice peaceful farming back down at the base. Maybe spread a few more seeds about and think about making some bread tonight. Oh yeah, phantoms. <laughs> 